Well, hello everybody and welcome to the nice guy in a nice t-shirt Minecraft plugin tutorial series. I'm just kidding. Actually, in today's video, this is going to be fun because I'm going to teach you how to get your plugin off the ground, how to release and how to compile your first Minecraft plugin. This is exactly what I'm going to be showing you. I'm going to give you all, all the software and the tool stack that you need to have. Step number one, then we're going to be assembling our testing server. This is a place that will let you test the plugin and I'm not going to be spending too much time there because I know that most of you guys already have a Minecraft server or you know how to create one obviously if you want to make a Minecraft plugins and then number three I'm going to actually show you how to compile your plugin and also how to tweak the app called IntelliJ in which you will create these Minecraft plugins so First of all, check the blog post below for PDF resources and guides. It is much more in depth and it also contains all the links that you need to get started with this properly. And it also can get updated in the future much quicker than this video. So let's just start by talking about how to upgrade your computer. Like this rocket right here is being upgraded apparently. So here's a slide. I'm not going to go into depth with it, but this is basically all the software stack that you need to have before you code Minecraft plugins. Please guys, at least install the first four. You can see I've placed a little underline right there. The first one is obviously Java. Google Java JDK, which stands for the development kit of Java for developers and get the version. This can typically be the latest one. Uh, the other one is an IDE, which stands for integrated development environment. This is the app to code plugins in. And we're going to be using IntelliJ because that's what Google developers use. It's been a number one choice for many years for now for many people. If you are a part of our training program called Project Orion, which actually contains a full Java course and it contains a full seven week how to make advanced micro plugins course and it has me there twice per week to give you guys personalized help then we are actually going to give you uh, free premium licenses for that software however if you're not a part of that you can simply get the community edition then number three i simply recommend a compressing app to help you uh, decompress files which you may download because some Minecraft plugins comes uh, come as a zip or as, as a jar uh, as a rar file not as a jar they come eventually as a jar as i'm going to show you but some plugin authors they like to compress them and then the default uh, setup on windows does not let you uncompress them so you can get the software which you can see on the screen or find your own alternative same goes for the text editor please do not use the default one because especially <clears throat> excuse me if you're going to place emojis there in your minecraft plugin config files which i'm going to teach you how to do later on the default windows or mac os text edit they typically did struggle in the past with this a lot so i'm just recommending some alternative tools which you can see on the screen and i also recommend getting a one click screenshot and gifs and or recording tool so that you can easily take a screenshot of the tool uh, upload it to a image your server for example and then you can paste it in the comment section if you ever have a problem with my tutorials it's going to help you tremendously good Moving on to, by the way, if that was too quick, click the blog post link. Uh, it's in the this video description and you're going to see all the links to all the software that I mentioned, including this very slide. So as, I assume that, you know, you've paused this video and make sure to have all these boxes ticked. Moving on to assembling a test server. Uh, again, I assume that most of you guys already know what a Minecraft server is, so I'm just going to go through it briefly. I'm just going to be using paper. If you don't know the difference between spigot, paper, bucket, craft bucket, NMS, please head over to the very first video because I explained everything there. In this one, I'm just going to show you that you should go to papermc.io. You should get the jar which looks like this one, a paperclip. And then I just want you to guys guys rename the jar to paperclip.jar, which stands for Java file. And then uh, we're going to be giving you a launching script for starting the server under different operating systems. So for Windows, you're going to get a bad file. Then you can obviously open it if you don't trust me what's in there. And then, yeah, just double click it. It's going to boot up the server. The first time it will start, it will stop at the EULA agreement. So you need to open up this EULA thing, change the false to true, save it, close it, and start the server again. When you start it again, the folder structure should look like something like that, including the plugins folder where we're going to be placing our plugin. I'm not going to spend too much time here uh, because most of you guys already know this, but the thing that I want to recommend is something called the tester plugin. And if you type, if you get that plugin, the link is inside the blog post. You can type the tester command to see all 
the debug commands that it has very nice and handy for debugging and testing your plugins uh, because these commands require no permissions and they're always going to work and they're very handy i also suggest you install these three plugins because we may use them later on i'm not going to spend too much time explaining because i think most Minecraft server owners are familiar with them Awesome. So let's talk about the actual compilation because we've been speaking for five minutes and I did not actually show you how to make a plugin yet. So if you've downloaded IntelliJ and you open it in your very first step in the slide with the tools, it should look something like this. If you already have, you know, a program inside IntelliJ to get to this screen, you can simply go to file and hit close. And then you're supposed to see a new project button. Before we go there, however, I'm going to give you a couple of tips to make your IntelliJ even better. First one being installing a couple of plugins. Now, this is not a Minecraft plugin. This is an IntelliJ plugin. And the plugins that I do recommend having is Minecraft development. So go to marketplace, type in Minecraft. Now marketplace, just type in my non mine academy. Come on, what am I thinking? Uh, <laughs> naughty boy. So type in Minecraft and then Minecraft development and then hit install. Do the same for save actions tool plugin. This is going to save you also a lot of time when your when your will be saving your files. We can automatically reload them and stuff like that. And then if you already know how to code in Java, I also recommend you. Consider getting GitHub Copilot. This is a paid plugin. It's about $10 per month, but it, but it will also complete your code. Now, if you are a very beginner and you don't know much Java, first of all, get Project Orion. It comes with a full Java course. This is our training program, which contains the Java course for free because you got to have Java knowledge if you want to make Minecraft plugins. I highly suggest you do that. We've specially built the training, um, unlike reading books, unlike taking Java courses will specially build it to just teach you the stuff that you need to make Minecraft plugins in a much faster time frame. There's a 30 day money back guarantee on it. And I'm myself there twice per week on live calls so I can give you personalized help. Enough saying about this, enough talking. The link is in the description. I highly su suggest you check it out if you have no Java experience. I also don't recommend you, you download the GitHub Copilot tool if you have no experience uh, because it can just confuse you. Only get that if you already know how to code in Java and you can read and edit the code they will pr produce. Good. Moving on to, I'm going to give you a couple of customizing options. First one, if you go to customize and then hit all settings. First option being under the build under compiler, make sure to build the project automatically. This will display the syntax errors much quicker. It's going to save you time. And then the other one is, I think, under editor, general, and then auto import. Make sure that these two options are ticked. It's going to help you manage your imports. And then the third is under other settings, safe actions. And I'm not going to comment uh, on the Java inspection and quick fix too much because this is Java related. This is just going to save you time and add things to your code automatically saving you more time, obviously. And then we need to activate this when um, you're saving the file. You can also activate this on a normal save if you, if you want to. And then the formatting actions should be optimized imports and reformat the file. And then also build actions should be reload in running debugger. It's gonna help you make your plugins faster. And I'll sh I show you how to utilize that option in a couple of videos ahead. Good. Now, finally, <laughs> oh, thank God, we can actually go and create our plugin. Head over to projects, click new project, and then you should be seen a window like this. Uh, this is coming from the Micro Plugin Development uh, Plugin. M not Micro Plugin, but the IntelliJ Plugin. So the name of the plugin is just going to be very simple. Cow Canoon. I'm going to be showing you how to spawn some flying cows. And then location can be anywhere you want to. Platform uh, type is plugin. Then there is supposed to be bucket. And then I do recommend you probably go with paper. But you can also go with just Spigot because you're essentially going to make the plugin also work on Spigot. If you just go with paper, plugin may not work on Spigot servers because uh, some API options on paper are not available on Spigot. I, again, I refer back to the very first video where I explained what is the difference between a mod and these distributions and what is the difference between the platforms and stuff like that. Minecraft version, I'm just going to leave it to the latest one. Plugin name, I'll set it to the same as this one. And then the main class essentially uh, is stored in the package. This is the package org mineacademy.cowcanoon. So here, if you just want to do it your way, I just recommend typing me dot your name dot the plugin name dot the main class name. If you have a domain, if you own, say, YouTube, then you can do something like this. This is my domain, mineacademy. 
So I just changed this to my own domain name. That's how it works. Build system is Maven. This is just a system having to do with compressing all the files, all the classes inside our jar, which is the actual plugin. You can use that and then build system properties. Uh, so group ID is essentially the first two, as I explained, this should be your reversed domain name or just me, not your name. If you don't have a domain artifact ID should be cow canoe, but typically I think the convention is just to put it in lowercase just like that. And then the version is 1.0.0. You can keep it there. Java version. So if you include, if you installed Java properly in the previous step, you should see the Java version that you've installed. I think Minecraft 1.20 requires Java 17 at the minimum. So I'm just going to go with that. Having said that, let's hit the magic button, create, let's have some coffee and let's wait until everything is reimported. Awesome. So now it does not show any windows anymore and it's re-imported properly. Guys, if you can see the, the bottom bar, head over to this hamburger menu, go to view, tool windows, no appearance, make sure to have this status, status bar ticked because sometimes it displays information that are otherwise not displayed. Anyways, guys, to make your first plugin, let me just walk you through the folder structure. So this is, this is the palm file, which comes from Maven. It has nothing to do with the actual bucket paper spigot. This is just for Maven to help Maven, uh, to help Maven compile your plugin. So I guess the only thing that you need to take a look here is the version which if you push updates, this version, you can increase yourself. And then down here is dependencies. And then basically this one, we're supposed to be checking if this is the latest one. So you can go to Maven paper, on Google, open up the first link. If you're, if you've decided to use paper and then they provide the latest version down here from the artifact information, which is 1.20.1. And, and this plugin does not get updated yet. So hit save and then right click to your palm, go to Maven, hit reload project, and you should be good to go. It's going to download that jar um, automatically. Also one quick tip, if you go to your setting again, and then you search for Maven, under here, under importing, it should be automatically download sources, documentation. This should be ticked because it's just going to help you to see all the help when you're coding with Spigot or Paper API. It's going to display all the help over the methods so that you, you understand them better. Good. Awesome. So now you can actually right click Maven and go download sources and documentation. You can click that too. Good. Next file inside this little plugin is called the plugin.yml file. This is simply instruction set for bucket to, uh, or spigot or whatever you have to help it find different information about your plugin, being a name, being a version, which is actually taken from the POM file. And then the main class right here, which we've dealt with previously, and then the API version. I'm just going to change this to 1.13 to make the plugin work because otherwise Spigot may, might have an artificial block just to block it artificially, but it might still work. Guys, if you went, if you want to make a micro plugin for version 1.8.8, you can still keep it here. Uh, 1.8 does not recognize that option. And then here I just recommend change it, it to Spigot and then change this to 1.8. You can just find the 1.8 uh, exact version if you Google this. And then finally, we have a package name inside of which there is a one class uh, which extends Java plugin. Every single Java plugin has a main class. Micro plugin has a main class which extends Java plugin from the bucket package right here. And this one simply comes with two methods, which you don't have to use. You can just delete them, but just for the sake of testing, I'm just going to go to the logger and I'll just uh, print some info message when the plugin is enabled. And I can add some nice prefix right here just to make it very visible in the console and when the plugin is disabled. So essentially what happens every time you start your server, it will load the plugin and then whatever you have between these two lines is going to be shown. And then when you reload the server or you stop it, whatever you have between these two brackets is also going to be executed. Very simple. Now, final step is to get this plugin out is to hit the magic arrow button. And if you can't see this, you should see Kaukinen package right here and you should see the run right here too. So these, these two should be the same, but if something does not go well, just hit this, the other one. Good. Now it's going to compile. And if you open up the workspace folder or wherever you have your cow canoe source, you should see a target folder. This is from Maven. It compiled your plugin. Wow. So now if you go to cow canoe jar, you can copy this and you can head over to your server. Actually me, I have it under YouTube. Copy paste this in your plugins folder, hit start and pray to God that it's going to work properly. There should be clean output. There should be no 
issues whatsoever. Awesome. Now, also a quick check to make sure that the plugin has loaded. If you type PL, you should see it in green. If it's in red, please paste the issue that you have in the comment section. I'll be I'll be happy to help. So here we can see Cowcanoon has been enabled. This is called from our method. And if I type in stop, it's going to say Cowcanoon has been disabled, which is actually redundant because it says disabling here. So you can get rid of these methods. And in the next video, I'm going to show you how to build a self-driving car from scratch. Seriously, I'm just kidding, guys. I'm going to show you how to build an exploding entities, how to shoot some exploding cows. How about that, guys? So I hope you've enjoyed this video. Again, check out the Project Orion micro training course. The link is in the description. Subscribe to this channel if you've enjoyed it. And I'll see you guys in the next episode. Take care.